All right, so hopefully you've got your colors that you want to use in your, in your picture. So now we're going to draw our rabbit. We need to draw the rabbit before we get started. So let's start with our paper in portrait direction. We're going to create a rabbit that's like a portrait of a rabbit and our paper needs to be this way in front of us in order for the rabbit to fit, okay? Remember this is landscape, is sideways. We need it up and down or portrait direction. And we also need to make ourselves some guidelines so that we know where to, it'll help us know where to draw our lines for our rabbit. So what I want you to do is just gently fold the one side over to the other, but don't, don't crease it. Don't push down on the center. Just kind of fold it and gently Gently make that crease. I don't want to have a permanent crease in there. I just want one I can barely see. And in my video, you can barely see my crease right there, okay? And then we're going to do the top. We're going to bring down to the bottom and do that same thing. We're not going to press down hard. We're just kind of rub it a little bit so we get a barely get line. But now we have a line we know where the center of our paper is up and down and we know where the center of our paper is across and this will help us when we're drawing our rabbit now i want you to draw with a pencil so that you can erase any lines you don't like but i'm going to draw with a sharpie so that you can see the lines okay so um just like normal i'm gonna so but also, when you're done drawing, your rabbit actually looks nicer without being traced with a Sharpie, okay? So in this one, I didn't use a Sharpie to trace my lines. I drew it with a pencil and then painted it. Um, and I only added a little black when I was all done. I added the eyes and I did some whiskers and that's it. I didn't trace my whole rabbit, okay? Um, I think it looks nicer that way. So I just want you to use a pencil and draw your rabbit today. So let's get started, because this, this class will take us the whole hour, so we need to get started to, on this now. So now that you have those lines on your paper, we need to find the center of our paper where the two lines cross. We're gonna start the, our rabbit kind of right near that center point. So I found the center, and I'm just gonna slide my finger over a little bit on that center line and I'm going to make a little dot there where I'm going to start. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. This is where I'm going to draw the, the fun hair on the top of his head and my, my little bunny, he has a little hair on the top of his head and that's where we're going to start the drawing. Okay, so I'm just going to draw. I'm going to stay right on that center. Can you tell the steps again? Can you tell the steps again? Oh, for folding the paper? You, no, like, um, here. Oh, we're going to. I'm starting right now, okay? <laughs> so find that center part of your paper that were the two lines, the two, and then just slide your finger over on that uh, middle line to a little bit to the side, to the left, okay? And you can see where in my video it's kind of right on that center crease that I made a little bit. You can see it. So I'm just going to start there. And I'm draw a curve line up. Okay, and then I'm gonna curve it back down. And then I'm gonna curve another line. Curve it back down. And I'll probably and I might give them one more little hair tuft here. So there's three hair tufts, and then another line for the top of his head. So it's like um, three little tufts of hair. And all they are is little curved lines that end in a point, okay? And I stayed right on my center line. I didn't go, I didn't drop below that. If you did, that's okay, don't worry. But it needs to, but that'll help us fit our rabbit on the paper, okay? And if your hair looks a little different than mine, that's okay. Your hair might flop over a little more, or might be a little smaller or a little bigger, that's okay, all right? So now we're going to go back over to where we started with that little dot there and we're going to create the ear and the ear is going to point towards the corner of our paper and fill that side of our paper up. So I'm going to start with a curved line towards the outside of my paper and I'm going to curve it the other way 
curve up to the top. So I just have like a curved line point and curve it up to the top of my paper and then I'm going to curve it down the other side but the up, um, like a reverse of that line by curving it out and then in. And that's my bunny ear, okay? And your ears may look a little different, that's okay. I had some students this morning flop one of the ears over to the side because they very nice. There's a, that's a nice ear. Good job. Yeah. So now on the other side. Yeah. And now on the other side, we're going to start where we left off. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do the opposite direction. We're going to point it to the other corner, okay? So I'm going to go make my curve line towards the outside of my paper. So curve out. And then in and all the way to that corner, almost to that corner. And then I'm gonna come down the other side and make an opposite line. Curve out and then curve in. Now I have two bunny ears that are very big. This bunny has very nice big ears, okay? Now the center of the ear, yes? Can you hear the ear on this side again? Uh, this side right here? or this side right here? Yeah, this one? Yeah, this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna start where I left that, uh, where I finished that hair on that side. That's where I'm gonna start the ear. And I'm gonna curve it out towards the outside of my paper. Then I'm gonna curve it towards the center of my paper. And then I'm gonna curve, draw it all the way to the top, that top corner. And then on that other side, I'm gonna go out towards the outside of my paper and then towards the center of my paper, and then I'm going to stop, okay? And then to draw the inside of the ears, you're going to use those same shapes, those same lines. I'm going to start up here, and I'm just going to draw a curved line down here like that, and then one on the other side, just following the shape of my ear, and those are the centers of my ear, okay? And I'm going to do that on the other side also. Curve it down. Or this one just following that shape of my ear okay uh, <clears throat> all right so now we need to do so as we can see the top half of our paper are just the rabbit ears and the top of his head the bottom part of our paper is going to be his face his cute little cheeks and his little neck is going to be the bottom part of our paper so <laughs> Oh, yes, that's great job. That looks nice. Those are great bunny ears. All right, so now um, we're going to take our center where that center of our paper is and that middle line that goes up and down. We're going to find the center and then we're going to find the bottom of our paper and then we're going to come up halfway. So about right here, which is halfway between the center of our paper and the bottom of our paper, okay? This is where we're going to put the, I'm going to put a little dot because this is where I'm going to make the bunny nose, okay? And I'm drawing it, I'm using that center line as my guide. So Can the, you tell again where we have to put the dot? Um, the center where that center, the two lines cross on your paper. So it crossed about right here on my paper and then the bottom of my paper. And I just kind of went to the middle of that. Okay. If yours is a little, if yours is a little higher, or a little lower, that's okay. I said about the middle. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be exactly okay. But this just helps us to know about where to put it. Okay. And so then I'm gonna make like a stretched out V. So I'm gonna start at that dot and just make a, a line going up, kind of like the shape of the ear, just a line in the same direction the ear is pointing and the same on the other side. So actually it looks like the letter V that kind of got flat, a flattened uh, letter V. See in my example, my bunny here, he has the same kind of nose, okay? That looks like a V. Is it like a U too? Yeah, it could be a U, a pointy U, or a, a flat V. And then underneath where you put that dot, you're just going to draw a line straight down. 
And that's going to help you know where to put the cheeks when we're ready to draw his cute little chubby cheeks. Okay. All right. So now we're going to draw the side of his face and then we're going to draw the other side of his face. Okay. And so we're going to start where we left off with the ear. Okay. And we're just going to make a little curved line curving in towards the center of our paper like that. And at, then I'm going to put a little circle right there at the bottom of that line on the uh, inside of that line a little bit. If you can see in my example there and then underneath the circle, I'm going to do another curved line and this time I'm going to curve it all. I'm going to curve it in towards the nose and out towards the paper and then come around and meet up with this line that I just drew. So you can watch first if you want and then you can do that curvy line. So I'm going to start under the eye under that circle that I made as the eye. Curve it in a little bit towards the nose, curve out, and make like the letter J, and then just end right right there where the, I drew that line. And that is his cute little cheek there, okay? I'm going to draw the other side, do it the same way but the opposite direction, so you can watch that side too, okay? It's just some, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine, remember, you are a little different artist than I am, so yours is going to look a little bit different, and that's okay. All right. Oh, good job. Those look great. Kashika, that looks great. You did a nice job on that. Okay. Yes. Perfect. You can do that. Yep. Awesome. He's a cute bunny. Yep. You can add that little circle or that little pupil in his eye if you want. Later, you're just going to color it in black anyway, so go ahead. If you want to add that, you can. All right, now I'm going to do the other side of the face. I'm doing it the same way as I did this side, but the lines are going to be the opposite, like a mirror image, like it's looking in the mirror. So I'm going to start at, I'm going to start at this ear, okay? Curve my line toward the center of my bunny, and then I'm going to stop. So about where I stopped in the other side so my eyes will be kind of in the same spot and I'm going to draw a circle for the eye okay and then I'm going to start that line underneath the eye and I'm going to curve it towards the nose and then out and then I'm going to go like a backwards J and meet that line go right up the middle just like that okay now he's got a cute little cheeks Amy? Yes. Can you try this? Very cute. Yes. You did a nice job there. Very cute. Very cute bunny. And I'm going to make his other little pupil there on his eye. All right. Now I just need a little neck on my bunny because the head's just kind of floating there. And I made it make to make him look like he has a body. Okay. So I'm going to start here at his cheek. And I'm just going to draw a line to the bottom of my paper like that. Okay, I'm going to go on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, and there I am. That's my bunny. That's all there is. Later, I will add whiskers after he's painted and the paint dries. Then you're going to use your black Sharpie to add some whiskers. See here, I added whiskers here on the cheeks. I added some hair on his chest there. I added some hair on his ears. Um, just some lines. Oh, nice. Cute bunny. Yeah. This is happy. I have to make it a bit longer because I put the line a bit up. That's fine. If you need to make it a little longer, that's okay. No, we're not. I don't want you to trace it with Sharpie. I want you to leave it a pencil, okay? All right. I only did Sharpie so that you could see it better. If I draw with a pencil, you would have a harder time seeing the bunny. So that's why I drew. I prefer to draw with a pencil like I did this bunny with just a pencil, okay? All right. Amy? Yes. Does it look like this? Very cute. Those are cute bunnies. 
Nice. All right. Is everyone? I see some wonderful bunnies. Yeah. Is everyone done drawing their bunny? Or is there anyone still working on their bunny? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go to the next to start painting. So I have to show you how to do that. So I need to see a thumbs up or just show me that your drawing is done. And then we can move on to the painting, okay? How about Mason? I can't, are you done? Huh? Yes? Give me a thumbs up if you are. Or a thumbs down if you're still working. Ooh, your face. I think your camera froze there. All right, perfect, good. Yeah, cute bunnies. All right, let's get started on the painting. The painting part is the most fun, I think. So you want to get your paints out and your water. Oh, and you might, if you don't have some, you might want a, some paper towel. I forgot to mention that. So. Um, Whenever you're painting, you should always have some paper towel handy, okay? You just never know, and then we will use a little bit of it, so. So we're gonna do our background before we do our bunny. Now remember, we're only using two colors, okay? You're only gonna use two colors of paint, so um, I'm using- I'm using purple and yellow. I'm using purple and yellow also. So I'm gonna do my background. I'm gonna use my do my background purple. So what I need to do first is take one of my clean paint brushes and a clean cup of water, get my paintbrush wet, wipe off the water so it's not dripping everywhere, and then I'm gonna paint my background with plain water. Okay, and you can kind of see it in the light how it's shiny. And I'm only going to do a little section at a time because if you paint the whole background, your water is going to dry before you get started with painting. So just paint your paper. Don't paint the bunny. Just paint the background. And I'm going to start by just painting in between his ears to start with, okay? I'm going to show you how to do it. And then you can finish your whole background. Just be really careful not to paint, get any water inside your bunny. Okay, we want to just do the paper. This is called a wet on wet technique with watercolor. And so we have to have our paper wet. So I've got my section wet. Now I'm going to take my other paintbrush, the one I'm going to paint with, and I'm going to get it wet in my other cup of water because that's going to be my paint water and I'm going to get my pur purple. I'm going to get a bunch of purple paint on my paintbrush, swirl it around in my purple. Then I'm going to touch it on where I put the water and you'll see the paint starting to spread and it'll start kind of doing its own thing. You can see it spreading on my paper a little bit and I might brush it a little bit. I might add some more water there. And I'm just gonna let the paint kind of do what it wants to do, okay? I'm just adding it to the water and letting the water make its own design, okay? And you can rub it just... Huh? Well, I'm, I'm still treading the water. That's fine. So, um... If it just spread a little bit of water at a time, because what happens, especially where I live, the air is really dry here. So I live kind of in a desert. So I need to keep adding water. My paper gets dry, so I have to add more water. You want to make sure that you're painting, uh, adding the paint to water, a wet paper. And this is called wet on wet, and this makes a really fun background. It kind of makes its own design. I never have two that turn out the same. Each time I do it, it turns out totally different. And it's very fun to see that. All right, and I have to add more water. So you're gonna do this to your whole background, okay? You're gonna use your clean brush to add water and your other brush to add the paint to it, okay? It inside the water, or the paint. I'm sorry. 
Okay. I'm sorry, Shubra, can you say that again, please? I do have to put it in the water and put it straight in the pan. You need to get your brush wet. So make sure you put your brush in the water and get it wet. Then put it in the paint and then put the paint on your water on your paper. Okay. Good. Cool. Yeah. And you can kind of, what you can do too, Kashika, is you can kind of spread it around. You can push the paint around and help it go through the water if you want. Um, you can fill you can fill in some of those white spaces, or you can leave them if you want them. Um, I like to have light and dark space. See how I have some dark areas and some light areas. I like to do that just for a variety and to look different. Um, but you can do you can kind of play around with it and see how the um, what the paint does in the water and experiment a little bit so i kind of, sometimes i push it i push the paint in the water a little bit just to see what it does sometimes i let it do its own thing um it's just fun to see yeah it did, didn't it? Mine does too. Mine turns nice and colorful. Oh no. There. It's so pretty. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish my whole background. Yes. It's kind of not working. Remember I said the kind of paper you have makes a difference? If you don't have the watercolor paper, it's not going to turn out quite the same as mine, okay? Um, if you're using regular paper, you're, it's going to be a little bit different. It may not do the same thing that mine is doing, okay? So you kind of just have to play around with it and do the best you can, okay? All right, yeah, the paper, pa paper does make a difference when you're doing watercolors, so... Um, that's why I said it may turn out a little differently than mine. So don't worry. It's just your paper, sweetie. It's not that you don't know how to do it. It's just your paper. I like it. It's very cool. Yeah, it kind of it reminds me of like a tie dye. If you're going to tie dye your shirt or something. My name is my, my drawing. Oh, yeah, I like that. So go ahead and work on your, and get your whole background done, and then we'll work on our bunny, and I'm going to show you how to do your bunny. And we're going to do a little mixing of our paint today, too. Okay. And also, on the normal paper, when we put water, it just sticks to tables or anything. It depends what kind of what kind of paper do you have? A normal paper, and then if it comes by, my mom said I have to do it on a watercolor paper. Yes, watercolor paper will work the best. Regular paper, the water will probably soak through the paper. Okay, but yeah, watercolor paper is going to work the best for you. Yeah. Instead of like kind of doing the watercolor trick, can I like paint the whole entire background normally purple? Yeah, if yours isn't working. Yeah. Or something. yeah, so if your your paper is not working because it's not watercolor paper, you can just go ahead and paint it. I mean you can you can make polka dots, you can paint it with dots all over the background if you want it, or make a pattern if you want. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it differently because you. Yeah. This is a cool trick. It is, isn't it? This is called this is called wet on wet. It's a watercolor technique, and a lot of artists use this when they're painting a sky, or they're wanting a cool background. They'll use wet on wet. Sometimes when they're doing water, they'll use that technique. 
I like it because it had, it's kind of like you're letting the paint decide how to look on the paper rather than you deciding, you're letting the paint decide how it wants it's, to look. It's like, it's like a magic paint. <laughs> it kind of is, isn't it? And now we put a dot and then the, it's like a flower blooming. We just put a dot that is kind of like a seed and then it just blooms. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it too. It does look like that. A fast growing flower. <laughs> a fast yeah. blooming flower. <laughs> and also it looks like the flowers are like the yeah, flowers are just going in just one, one minute. Yeah, it does, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun way to paint with watercolors. You can also, uh, we're just using two colors today in this project, but if you want to play around later and make your own painting, you can actually do this technique with more than one color. And then the colors kind of run together and it looks very cool. So you can actually mix your watercolors when you're doing this technique. I'm just using two today because I wanted to show you how you can paint this whole painting with just two colors and it would look really cool. But if you want to do another one later and do more colors, uh, that'd be cool. I would love to see that too. There, I'm about finished with mine. Some of you may still be working, that's fine. I'll give you a few more minutes. Um, those of you who finish and are waiting, um, what you might want to do is just kind of blow on your paper and get it starting to dry, okay? Because sometimes um, when we're painting the yellow bunny, we want our background to be dry, a little more dry if possible. So one way to do it is blow on it and help it to dry. You can wave it in the air. If there's a lot, if there's a puddle of water on your paper, just take a paper towel and kind of blot it gently pick up that water and it actually creates some more texture in your paint too that way. So I'm gently blotting an area where I have like a little puddle of water and it's making a very cool light area. It looks really cool. And that'll help dry your paper quicker also by blotting some of that heavy, those puddles of water. Okay. My mom always gives me like hard drawings, like maybe like goddess drawings or butterfly and like um, bottles. Oh, fun. Yeah. If yeah, you... and my brother is, he's a big learner, big learning one, and he can draw butterflies or like that. This would be a fun one to do as a butterfly. You could do that. You could do the inside of the butterfly wings with this technique. It would look so, so time, it would look so time, cool. When I get watercolor and paper, then I'm going to make like a rainbow. Yeah, that would be cool to see. Shine, shine, yeah. And blue background. Very cool. All right. So those of you who are, are still working on your backgrounds, I'll give you a minute or two more because we're getting, we're getting where we need to get moving along but those of you who are waiting just kind of dry your paper blow on it a little bit if you need to blot some of the water you can blot it or blow on it mine's almost dry that looks cool look how different it looks from my first one see the difference I have Every time I do it, it turns out totally different. I love it. That's so cool. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Oh, yeah, I see that. Mason, that looks awesome. Good job. All right. How's everybody doing? Just give me a thumbs up or show me your picture if you're finished. Okay. I'll give you a couple minutes. What we might need to do is, um, I'll give you a couple more minutes, but then what we might need to do is just have you work on your bunny 
and you can go back later and finish your background later since you know how to do it you might have to finish your background later okay um, just because we want to make sure that we finish I want to make sure you know how to do the project and get it and do all the parts before the class is over so you can always finish it yes what the the watercolor in the background? Yeah, yeah. When you put the water in it, it's almost like a magic paint. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's pretty cool. Kind of like magic. Can you can you hold yours up so I can see? Shabra, can you hold it up so I can see? Your picture. Your picture. <laughs> How about your your picture, sweetie? Oh yeah. That's so pretty. I like the color. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I use light purple. Oh, yeah. Like purple. That's a pretty color. Yeah. Yeah, Zoe, you have a question? You finished with your bunny? You ready to, you finished with the background, I mean? Okay. All right. Well, just work on drying. Maybe blow on your bunny and help it to dry. We're gonna. St we're actually gonna start our bunnies here in just a minute. Um, oh, Patterson, you do you have yours? Oh, yeah, that looks cool. I like it. Very nice. All right. So um, we are gonna start our rabbits here in a minute. So if you are still working on your background. It's okay to stop and work on the bunny and then finish your background later, okay? That way you can take your time, all right? So what I want you to do is get, uh, if you've got your second color of paint that you know you're going to use, um, we're going to go ahead and we're not going to use plain water anymore for our rabbit. We're going to paint the rabbit differently. We're not going to put water on him first. We're just going to get our brush wet, put paint on our brush, and just paint our rabbit normal. We're just going to... Yes. Who's showing? Who's... Oh, Shree, that's... Oh, nice. I like the background, too. I do like that background. My purple and dark purple and and then I decided to mix one of it. Then I made like these cool designs. Yeah, I did, didn't it? That's very cool. All right, so when we're painting our rabbit, you just want to put the you just want you want the paper to be dry, and you're just gonna r brush the paint on. Okay, that's just kind of like a watercolor, um, just wet on dry. Or just the normal watercolor painting is all we're going to do. And you're going to paint any area of your rabbit that you want to stay light. Like I'm going to leave the middle of the ears lighter. I wanted to make them lighter. All I do is don't put any paint there. Okay. In watercolor, there is no white watercolor paint. In watercolor, what happens if you want something to be white, you just don't paint that part. Okay. You leave it you leave the paper show through all right and that's uh, what i'm going to do for the middle of my ears is i'm going to not paint them because i want them to look white so i'm going to paint yellow all the way around my ears i'm going to paint my whole bunny um yellow and then i'm going to show you how to mix your background color with your rabbit color to get some little darker like if I mix purple with my yellow, I'm going to get a darker yellow, okay? And um, it's going to make a cool like shadow color for adding some shadows and dark areas to my bunny. So, but first I need to paint him all yellow. Get him all yellow. So if you're still, um, you can go ahead and paint your bunny, even if your background's not finished yet, because you can go back later and finish your background. 
I just want you to be able to know how to paint your bunny before um, the class is over. Sometimes when I'm teaching a class online or in Zoom, we um, not everyone finishes the project in class and that is okay. Because what I do is I make sure that you know how to do it before we close the class and then you can finish it on your own and take your time, okay? Some of you may finish it and that's fine, but because we have different ages, some of you can work a little faster maybe than others and that's okay. And so I always wanna make sure that you know you can finish it on your own before we close the class. So I'm gonna get all this yellow put on my bunny and then I'm gonna show you how to mix. If I was using the washable, washable marker, then, then the green was coming all over, right? You know what? You can use washable. If you have a washable marker, you can actually color with that marker, paint over it with plain water, and it kind of will act like watercolor a little bit. So you can you could color something with a washable marker and then use a wet paintbrush and paint over it and see what happens. Okay, it kind of acts like watercolor a little bit when you do that. All right, so what I want to, I'm gonna show you how to make some, so my rabbit right now is just all flat one color yellow. If you see in my example, he's got some shadows on him. So I'm gonna actually mix some little purple in with my yellow to create a darker yellow, to create some shadow color that I can paint on my bunny. So this is where I wanted you to see your cover of your paint tray. Actually makes a good mixing tray. And you can see mine, it looks like I've already mixed some colors in there before. You can kind of see um, some leftover where I put mixed colors in there before. If you don't have a color, you can remove your paint tray from its container and then you can use that con that can container. Like this, like this, like this kind of tray. Like I don't know yeah, the tray. clear plastic, the clear plastic, that's a mixing tray. I don't know if you knew that, but watercolors come with a cover, most of them come with a cover like that and it becomes a great mixing tray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush wet and get a, yep, yeah, that tray, that, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. you can use that as you're mixing. So I'm going to get a bunch of yellow and put the yellow in my tray. And I have to do this several times, put a bunch of water on my brush, swirl it around in my yellow, and then put it on my tray, okay? You got to get quite a bit of paint there. I want quite a bit of yellow. I want more yellow and very little purple. So I'm gonna to try to get a bunch of yellow in there. Ms. Happy? Yeah. Ms. Happy, this kind of yep, that'll work too. Perfect. Yep, your, your tray may look different than mine and that is okay. So you wanna put a bunch of your rabbit color, whatever color you're using for your rabbit, put it in your tray, a bunch of it, if you can get a whole bunch there. Okay, then you're gonna take just a tiny bit of your background color, not a lot. You're just gonna do a little bit. Like I barely dipped my brush in my purple and I put a little dot of purple in my yellow and now I'm gonna mix it together. Ooh, and I have a nice dark yellow. And I'm gonna use that to create a shadow on my bunny. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint with that color now. And I'm going to, wherever I feel like under, like under his neck, where his head is creating a shadow, I'm gonna put that darker color, okay? So I'm gonna paint under there to create a little dark, like a little shadow. And then I might take that color and I might put a little bit on his hair, maybe here. Paint a few. 
I, okay. Good. Good question, Joshua. I took my bunny color, which was yellow, and I put a bunch of yellow in my tray. Then I took my background color. I took one tiny dot of my background color and mixed it in with my rabbit color. And I created my... That's black, why? No, this was purple. It looks black in the video, but it's purple. My black is down here. I actually used purple, okay? Because I'm only using the colors I used on my painting. So I'm using my bunny color, a bunch of my bunny color, and one tiny drop of my background color and mixing it together and making my own color, okay? And that's what I'm gonna use to put some dark areas on my bunny, okay? Yes, Zoe, did you have a question? Mix my own paint, it's not working, it just like dissolves into the like tray kind of. Oh, it does. Do you have a plastic tray? Is your tray plastic? Yeah. Huh. Did you put a bunch? Did you put a lot of paint? Like a whole bunch. Like get your brush really, really wet and swirl yeah. so you have lots of water and swirl it around in your paint and then wipe it on your tray. You want to use a lot of paint. So you have to do it a lot of times. Try that. Yeah, that might be it. You might just not have had enough paint and it was drying too quickly. That can happen too. All right, and I might put a little bit under his nose. And maybe this cheek is a little bit darker because if my sun is shining over here, my bunny will have some shadows on this side of the opposite side of his face. So wherever you think there should be some darker areas on your bunny, you can paint that with that color that you just mixed. I'm gonna go now. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining. All right. All right, and I'm going to put some on his ear. Can we hold circles of our color? Because my color just gets dissolved into the tray too. Yeah. You I put so much. Yeah, sometimes that can happen. Depends what kind of tray or what mine, kind of plastic you have. Mine is kind of like this. On the white part, yeah. Like this, but it still works. Yeah, and if it starts drying, just add some water, plain water, to that tray, and that will help make that paint loosen up again and start working too. Okay, that will that will work too. And just go ahead and add that dark wherever you want. You don't need to um, add a lot of dark; just a little bit here and there. You can kind of see. And then I'm maybe underneath his cheek a little bit. And you can just add, if you think, if you want to blend it in a little bit, just add a little water to that and it'll blend in that mark a little bit. So you could just add a little bit of plain water and it'll blend that color right in. There. And that's, and then when your bunny is all the way dry, you can take your black marker and add your little whiskers, add some little hair lines on his ears maybe, or ha add some, I can't right now because mine is wet, uh, otherwise I would show you, but I can show you my original. I don't know if you can see it very well. I added some whiskers real, right here. I have some whiskers on his cheeks. I have some little hair here on his chest there and some hair lines on his head. Ooh, yeah. I see that, Zoe. I created very brown, brown, um, brown. I don't know how I put it. So, uh, Joshua, on your, pa on your bunny, and you look in my video screen, you're creating a color to create a shadow. So his, his head is making a shadow on his neck. So I colored some dark area under his, under his face, on his neck. And then I colored some dark area, a little bit on his ears and a little bit on his cheeks, okay? You can kind of see where I did a little bit. You don't have to add a lot. It just helps your bunny look a little more. It's not so flat and it looks like he has more form. 
Okay. And that's how, that's all there's left to doing your bunny. Are there any other questions um, about finishing your rabbit before I leave? I have a question. So could we not paint a rabbit for, like, for the shadows because I just don't like the shadow? Um, if you don't want to add shadow, you don't have to. I just wanted to, you to know that you can create a shadow by mixing it with its complementary color, okay? Yep, if you, yeah, that looks great. I like that, Sri. That looks awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm mixing yellow and Purple. Just a tiny bit of purple. Did you use just a tiny bit of purple, like a tiny little drop? 